Once the contest has begun, our Sergeant Arms will secure the door. Uh, we ask members of the audience to please refrain from leaving or entering the room during the contest. After the contest, please do not leave the room until after all the ballots have been collected. We need to make sure we get all of our ballots cleanly. <coughs> please try to remain seated until then. We have six contestants again in this contest. And this will be our speaking order. Contestant number one, Murad Shah. Murad Shah is contestant number one. Contestant number two is Carolyn Broden. Carolyn Broden is contestant number two. Contestant number three is Bruce Hooker. Bruce Hooker is contestant number three. Contestant number four, Curtis Stangy. Curtis Stangy is contestant number four. Contestant number five, Mark Lebrin. Mark Lebrin is contestant number five. Contestant number six is Karen Giddles. Karen Giddles, contestant number six. As in the last contest, there will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timers, I'll ask you to time that minute for me again. After all the contestants have spoken, again, the judges will have as much time as they need to finish off their ballots. We will now begin our humorous speech contest. Our first speaker, Murad Shah. Speech entitled, He is Waiting. He is Waiting, Murad Shah. Have you ever been in a flight when everything went smoothly? Have you ever been on a flight with your spouse when everything went smoothly? <laughs> Mr. Contest Chair, Madam Contest Chair, uh, Mr. Toastmaster Madam, and fellow Toastmasters, everyone who is here for a great laugh. <laughs> Every time my wife and I go on a flight, I am shaking with fright because nothing seems to go right. And we end up in a big fight. Why? Because of him. <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> he is the gremlin from the 1984 movie, The Gremlins, who escaped to torture me every time my wife and I would go on a flight. <laughs> For example, when we went on our honeymoon, the problem started as soon as I stepped out of the house. The taxi was late. The flight was late. Our honeymoon was late. <laughs> we had a great time on our honeymoon. It's time to come back. We get to the airport, looking through my travel documents. My tickets are missing. He made my tickets disappear. I had to buy tickets at full price in St. Thomas just to come back home. He struck first time. The next year, we went to Orlando on our vacation. The problem started as soon as we got to the airport. The flight was delayed. Our luggage was delayed. Our vacation was delayed. My luggage did not get there until two days after we were there. The whole time we were at the park, I kept thinking, what happens if the luggage gets here after we've gone back home? I couldn't enjoy the parks. Second time he struck. So of course, a few years later, when it was time for me to go to India for my sister's wedding, I said to my wife, Charu, we need to go separately. It's going to create a lot of torture for us. Yeah, right. You want me to go to India 8,055.37 miles by myself because you are afraid 
of a fictional character? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Okay. Together. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, where is the compromise in marriage? <laughs> so, of course, we had to go together. The flight from Chicago to Amsterdam, no problem. From Amsterdam to Bombay, no problem. We had a lot of fun at the wedding. Time to come back. Flight from Bombay to Amsterdam, no problem. Amsterdam to Chicago. We had to go from Terminal 1 to Terminal 2 on a shuttle train. I get on the shuttle train with the luggage and he closes the door behind me. I'm on the train and she's outside. I've got the luggage and she's got the travel documents. <laughs> Big airport. Crowded place. Lots of noise. I can't see her. I don't have a cell phone. How am I going to get in touch with her? Should I go back or should I stay? I decided to go back. And I see her on the next train. <laughs> What am I going to do now? Dilemma. Should I wait? Or should I go back? So of course I went. She is not there. Where did she go? Shopping? Exploring the airport? She had the travel documents. Maybe she went back to Chicago. After a little while, back and forth, 45 minutes, panic, trying to get back in touch with her. I finally went back to Terminal 2 and headed over to check-in counter. What were you doing? <laughs> Exploring the airport? Shopping? I know you couldn't go back to Chicago. I have the travel documents. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you would think after the honeymoon, after the trip to Florida, after the trip to India, I would be scared out of my mind to go on a flight with her. But our children were with us. And he doesn't strike when the children are around. He is afraid of children. <laughs> he is waiting for the time when the children grow up and go out so he can come back and torture us every time we go on a flight together. So the next time you are about to book a flight, think of the sight of me in flight. But you will be free because he is waiting for me. <laughs> distinguished guests and friends. Let me start by saying, picture yourself in a bar. Sitting alone on a bar stool, having a drink, sitting alone. And all of a sudden you see the girl or guy out of the corner of your eye of your dreams. Not just any girl or guy, but this is the one you've been dreaming about your whole life, thinking like, oh my gosh, this is a perfect person for me. And you're thinking like, all right, this person just happens to be there. And then you start seeing them walking right towards you. And then you see them waving at just you. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to be ready to say what I'm going to say to this, the person of my dreams. All right, I don't want to make a fool of myself. And you're thinking as I get closer and closer, this is the person I'd like to get married to. This is the person I'd like to have kids with. I'd like to have the house with the white picket fence in the front. And as they get closer and closer, they're waving. 
and then they wave just past you because they're waving at the person behind you. <laughs> and this isn't just any person. This is like Brad Pitt, Johnny Depp, best looking guy in the world, flip collar. So what do you do in this situation? Do you get mad? Do you punch that guy in the face? Do you run out of there screaming with your arms flailing like a Muppet? Do you curse the heavens that this ever happened to you? No? You brush your stuff off? You acted like you didn't see her? Like she didn't see you? And you think to yourself, try again, and welcome to dating in 2014. I can say I'm no expert in dating, but I've had many experiences that I'll be sharing with you tonight. I'm not going to share the great experience with you. No one wants to hear that. No one wants to hear about the perfect date. No one wants to hear about my uh, swimming with dolphins. Nobody wants to hear about, oh, it was the best date ever. We went to this and this and this. People want to hear the bad stories. <laughs> you want to hear about your date was late. Your date never showed up. They had bad breath. They made you pay for the bill. That's the date stories you want to hear. Actually, there's a German word for this called Schadenfreude, which means the pleasure of others' misfortunes. And the person who loves us the most is my brother. I've had many bad dating stories in my life, and each one my brother loved more than the last. He's like, wait a minute, you mean she didn't show up? You mean she didn't like you? You mean the date went horribly? Like, it was, like he loves the story so much, and his enjoyment is so thick, you could put it over pancakes. Like, he's just sitting there in joy. He's like, I want to hear more. He's like, oh, the date went good, I don't care about that. Tell me about the bad ones. <laughs> so, to focus on the schadenfreude, the not positive stories, I'm going to go through and give you some of my experiences, starting first in elementary school. Elementary school already has their first love, and mine was no different. She was the tomboy, the one that everyone liked. She was my best friend. We liked to play baseball and talk about movies. So I'm thinking, I think I'm going to make the step and say, I want to be more than friends. I'm going to write her a note and say that I love her. And since being third grade, I'm thinking, why write I love you once when you can write it 20 times? It's not at all me being weird. So I gave her the note, and she looked at me, and then walked away. Moving on <laughs> to high school. I had my first serious relationship. We were going out for six months, and I was thinking, I'm going to break up with her. I'm going away to college. I'm like, I don't need to be in a relationship anymore. So I thought I'd be a nice guy doing it. I did it over the phone. So I'd say, I'm going to breaking up. And then she kept just focusing on the one word. You're dumping me. You're dumping me. I'm like, no, we're just parting ways. We're just not going to see each other for a long time. We're just no longer going out. So that went very well, because, you know, I was thinking, college is the place. I'm going to meet lots of women there. So moving on to college, relationships I had. Nope, that didn't happen. I went speed dating once, got paired up with a guy. That was good. The whole time we spent, uh, what do you like to do? And he's like, what do you like to do? And he's like, I'm not gay. Oh, you're not gay either? I'm like, oh, that's okay. All right, after college. Then I tried this thing, after college, you're like, how do you meet people? You don't have those social gatherings anymore like high school and college. So I tried this thing called online dating. It's really nice to be rejected by people you've never even met. <laughs> they have crazy names too. They don't have names like Sally and Jenny. I got rejected by a wild wombat 24565. So I guess there's already many other wild wombats. She said, I don't think this is going to work out. But it's okay. Match.com even reaches out and gives you a nice hug, saying, it's all right, there's other fish in the sea. And I did find other fish in the sea. My first serious relationship. Met her online, things are going great. And I'm thinking, this is the time. This is my first serious relationship. I'm going to use the words, I love you. So we went out to dinner, and I said, you know, we've been going on for some long time. I wanted to say, I love you. And she said, what are you going to have? <laughs> I'm thinking, like, well, maybe she just didn't hear me. I'm like, I should, you always want to look for signs in a relationship. I'm thinking, when should you be the next time I say it? And then she was saying to me, you know, Curtis, I really don't like holding hands. I'm like, it's kind of weird, but okay. She's like, Curtis, I really don't like kissing. I'm like, okay. And she's like, Curtis, I really don't like you. I'm like, this is the time to ask it again. Because <laughs> you know, it's all about timing in relationships. And I said, I love you. She said, I'm going to get the spaghetti. <laughs> so moving on, that relationship didn't work. My next relationship was super happy fun girl. She was always excited, always happy about everything. And I didn't even get to say I love you. She, had, she said it first. I love you. I love the trees. I love the birds. I love the plants. I love everything. So, and then I realized that we had a difference of opinion, we had our first fight, and she's like, I don't really like fighting, and it didn't work out. So then I moved on to my next serious relationship. I went on with her for a year and a half. I was committed, but I should have been committed because I was just staying in the relationship because I'm like, we've been going on for a year, we might as well just keep going out. So then I ended up breaking up with her, and I broke up with her again. And I must say, breaking up with her the second time was a lot easier than the first time. <laughs> Things were working out. So for a while there, I thought, I'm, gonna be in, I'm just going to be off on my own. I'm like, I'm going to be single, enjoy the single life. And then I met the girl of my dreams for real this time. I tried this thing called nerd speed dating. 
It's like regular speed dating, but there's Yahtzee, <laughs> and nerd trivia, and trivial pursuit. So you go around each of the tables, and instead of having one-on-one, -on -one, they have games, you get to know people. And then they said, hey, at the end of the night, if there's anybody you like, you beeline it over to them and talk to them. So I did. I saw the girl, I went right over to her and said, I like you. I'd like to get to know better. I'd like to get to know you better. And I must say, things that most people find obnoxious and irritating, she finds charming. <laughs> so I'm saying that in a relationship, you want to make sure you're going to have many, many bad stories. I think Schadenfreude, you're going to have those bad stories to tell, but if you keep going through enough of them, you'll finally have a positive story to tell. And that's why I say, be yourself, keep at it, thank you. Our next speaker is Mark Levin. Speech entitled Geese are Jerks. Geese are Jerks, Mark Levin. Good morning, still, fellow Toastmasters, <laughs> dignitaries, and honored guests. Today, for you, I'd like to explain that despite the prevailing notion that all animals are good and nice, there is one exception. And I'm not talking about my friend's gremlins here. Oh, no, no, no. My tormentor, ladies and gentlemen, is geese. Geese are jerks. And I hope to persuade you with a few pieces of admittedly anecdotal evidence, but I think by the end of it you may perhaps agree with me. First and foremost, Canadian geese, as migratory species, are federally protected and they act like they know it! I kid you not! One time I went to go feed some ducks on my lunch break off of work, and it's a really relaxing experience. You get to sit down next to the pond after you've convinced these meek little timid ducks to come over, bathe them with some bread, and they're all milling about to you, just nibbling at the bread, and you're like, oh, this is pretty chill, it's good. And then, out of the pond, they have that long neck so they can do that. What's that? <laughs> he knows what's going on and he wants in on this bread time. Okay, so he waddles over, shoulders his way through the ducks, and stands right in front of me. And he has this beady eyed stare that simultaneously conveys arrogance and disdain. And he gives me the stare. <laughs> you got my bread? I don't want to feed this goose. I don't like geese. Geese are jerks, so I don't feed him. And there's only a little bit more of this before he winds up and whaps my shoe with his beak. I'm just looking at him. He's looking back at me. <laughs> Who does this waddling, honking piece of Christmas dinner think he is? I decide who to give my bread to. But that's not all, guys. Geese have this perception of personal space. And that is, as a migratory species, everything is their personal space. Take a goose that's trying to find a nest, for example, and he's, you know, walking around, and it's like, ooh, here we go, here's a nice pond, I'll build a nest here. Right next to a major causeway, a bunch of humans walking next to it, perfect. Oh, and over here, look at this, a bike path. I'ma poop on it, all over it. And it's not just me, it's a whole flock of geese. And if a bike tries to come through, we're all gonna huddle around and make him go really slow and get this way. 
And they have this thing about you know being aggressive and territorial once they had their nest. So there's you just minding your own business, and the goose. What's this? A human? Several times my size? Minding his own business? <laughs> Chases after you and runs after you and makes you leave, lest he peck your hands off for attacking otherwise. But lastly, guys, I mentioned bike riding and how they can get in the way. There's a personal story here. One time where I was riding my bike along the side of the road, and you may have run into this before, one of these large flocks of geese is slowly ambling across the road. And traffic going both ways is stopped waiting for this column of geese to cross. So I figured, oh, you know, I'm on my bike, I can get off, I can help out the situation. So I pull my bike down and start just hurting the geese. Like, come on, guys, let's get out of the way of traffic. It's good. And I clear the geese out of the road, and all the drivers are able to continue on their way, and everyone has been passing the way, and they're like, hey, thanks, you know, thanks for helping us, you know, get the geese out of the way. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's good. That's a good, 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 good day today. But wait, there's more geese. I spot them coming, and I figure, well, I can't continue riding my bike along with these geese coming. They're going to hold up more cars. And all the cars are gone now, and I want to get on my bike ride, and I'm starting to get impatient. So all these geese are here across the road, so I start you know, to shoo them along, and I start you know, getting really aggravated. I, you know, it's kicking the air behind them. It's like, come on, geese, let's get out of here, let's go. I want to get going. And right, right at that moment, ladies and gentlemen, is when another car comes around the corner, and I'm not being nice to these geese anymore. I'm shouting at them, yelling at them, trying to get them out of the way, and the driver doesn't know I'm trying to help the situation. That's just what he walks into. So. There's me, shouting and yelling at geese, being a jerk. So he, as he passes by, driving along, yells at me, Hey, leave those geese alone, you jerk! <laughs> <laughs> me? No, 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 no. It was the goose, it was the goose, it was... You! <laughs> geese just... <laughs> this is happening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why geese are jerks. There's a complete lack of personal space, and they have no regard for where to hang out, where to properly build nests, because they're federally protected. And they've been getting away with it for far too long. <coughs> they can set up wherever shop they want and waddle slowly across traffic, because they can get away with it. They're federally protected, and we have to stay out of their way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why geese are jerks. And I hope I've led you to at least a few of you agree with me. Thank you very much.
balance have been collected.
Next contestant is Jeff. How long have you been part of Toastmasters? I've been part of Toastmasters since 2008. Okay. Which club are you representing today? Today I am representing Unity Toastmasters 6149. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your current education level? My current education level is Advanced Communicator Silver, Advanced Leader Bronze, but I am three speeches from my DT. Did you have any interesting events happen in a canoeing trip? 
Oh, absolutely. It's been great fodder for, uh, for some of my speeches. In fact, an icebreaker was uh, on a solo canoe trip having a bear enter my camp twice and having to chase it out of my oh, oh, oh. So, yes, wow. it's been good fodder for speeches. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm representing uh, North Brooks, relatively speaking, uh, for Allstate. Woo! Yeah. Um, uh, over six months. I'm not sure. I'm not a full year yet. Okay. Yeah. What's your current education Um, I forget all the different letters. I'm working on my competent communicator. Is that a CC? <laughs> uh, two speeches. This is my second speech, but I've done it like four times. So I don't know if that counts towards it. <laughs> <laughs> it says one of your interests are roadside attractions. What kind of roadside attractions appeal to you? Um, I like the linger the better. I'm always interested in roadside attractions. Um, I like the couple I really like down in Springfield. They have um, like where Lincoln was buried. Right next to it, they have the Funeral Hall of Fame, which is great because it's just a whole little museum about the size of this room of just headstones and balming fluids and different fun things. I remember I walked in there and like the weirder the better. I was like, this place is great. Do you give tours? And, like the lady's just reading a magazine, very bored. She's like, no, you can go in. So I have all these pictures of me like next to headstones. <laughs> so, yeah, the weird, I just like anything I like. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, so let's give a drum roll if we can. Third place winner of our Northeast Division Evaluation Contest is Murad Shah. Thank you. 